now. Down two. Correct. Number four just died. And ground eight zero nine or nine or one. We're gonna need to taxi back to the hangar. Not a single note belonging to this airport. Nothing saying fuel unavailable or anything. A little frustrated standing out here on the on the ramp with the way gas prices are right now and, and unnecessarily skyrocketing. I can just see that we're like right at the edge of the haze layer and if we can just get up a little higher, our visibility will increase like crazy. And for what's left of the daylight, we can actually make use of visually dodging the weather. I'm Josh, a pilot and flight instructor who loves the sky, sharing it with those around me and using it to see the world from a new perspective. Flying can seem super complex, but I make it my mission to promote safe practices while enjoying the beauty this world has to offer. Subscribe to Climb Into The Cockpit on future adventures. This is Aviation 101. Take me where your river flows I wanna drive on your open road like the wilderness where we are born singing whoa There's an ocean in your eyes A million stars that paint the sky So we'll drift down with the tide singing whoa 45 days on the move, 62 hours in the airplane, 5,000 nautical miles. In June of 2021, Chelsea and I caught a flight to Alaska so I could do my seaplane training at Alaska Floats and Skis. And ever since, we have longed to return with our Cessnas to the last frontier. But our plans to do just that in the entire summer of 2022 were scrubbed. Alaska was expecting a record tour season, so finding lodging and a car was proving to be way more difficult than in the past. Another challenge was the timing of November 809-901 coming out of avionics with a brand new panel. The plane came out of the avionics shop in Daytona Beach, Florida on May 1st, and we had planned to head toward Alaska on May 15th. We didn't plan for the turnaround to be that quick, so the pressure was on. We felt really rushed. The last straw for me was this record inflation in the United States, easily doubling fuel prices along our entire route. At that point, Chelsea and I made the difficult decision to scrub our four-month trip to Alaska. So where does that leave us? We blocked off our entire summer to work, fly, and gather footage in the 49th state, which is now opened up on our calendars. Looking at the cost to stay in different places, Chelsea discovered that the Bahamas is actually a really affordable place to stay, especially when compared to Alaska right now. She also watches a lot of sailing videos and she's just a huge fan of the Bahamas, so she had many compelling arguments for me in favor of this alternative. To keep this sort of long trip nature of our previous summer plans, I suggested we start in the Bahamas and visit our friends all up the East Coast and across Canada and end the trip arriving at Oshkosh. And thus, version two of our summer plan was born. As we thought more logically about this version of the trip, we grew more concerned about prepping for Oshkosh. For Chelsea and I, that's the busiest work week of the year, and the two weeks leading up to AirVenture are full of coordinating and planning. We asked ourselves, do we really want to be tourists in the middle of all of that? The answer was obvious, so we decided to make Oshkosh our starting point, and dedicated the month of August 2022 to executing our previous plan, but in reverse. And thus, the third and final version of our trip was born. Welcome to part one. Well, it's a beautiful summer day here in San Marcos, Texas, and it's already, oh, actually it's only 88 degrees, but the high is 102. And Chelsea and I are getting ready to take the airplane with its new avionics on its first big trip. So our plan is we're gonna leave today from San Marcos, fly the Skyhawk up to Bowman Field in Louisville, Kentucky. That's her home airport. We're gonna stay there for about a week, hang out with her family, and kind of regroup before we head to AirVenture in Oshkosh. Oshkosh 2022. Oshkosh 2022. We're gonna be flying this airplane in. We're not camping with it. We're renting a house like we did last year. Maybe we'll talk to some people at Oshkosh and kind of formulate and get a better idea. We plan to go north into Canada, cut across the northern part, dipping in and out of Canada, maybe Niagara Falls, all the way to the east coast, and then down the east coast, all the way to the Bahamas. 
So we're running <clears throat> super duper behind this morning because we had a lot of prep to do. Rigging cameras, then weighing everything, packing everything to the airplane. We still need to get gas. We had to put some air in the nose tire. It was a little low. We've got our coffee, water, fuel, oil. Well, we're about to get more fuel. And then we're gonna be good to go after we get a pre-flight done. Then we're gonna be departing out of San Marcos, Texas VFR, bound for LOU. Bowman Field, Louisville, Kentucky. Run up checklist, brake set and hold. If you want yep. to pull over to Fuel the selector on both. Yep. Going, uh, Trim set for takeoff. And unlocked. And throttle, 1700. There, and Max. You can just stay on Alpha and go behind him. Down two. Number four just died. Number four did just die. Now I'm on both. That's the right. Back to the left. Yeah, no. Back to right. Back to both. That's a dead spark plug. And ground 809901. We're going to need to taxi back to the hangar. Cessna 9901, Roger. Uh, why don't you go Charlie Bravo and cross runway 8 to parking with me? Okay, well, attempt number one was failed trying to get out of here. So we noticed that cylinder number four was you know, really bogging down on the exhaust gas temp, which means combustion's not happening. But on the right mag, it's running just fine. So that tells us it's not a valve, it's not intake, it's none of that kind of stuff. It's definitely having to do with the dual ignition system. There's absolutely some lead buildup in here. And it was on the bottom, so we see a little bit of oil, which is totally normal. Um, but thankfully, Josh had some new Tempest plugs here at the hangar, so we swapped it did another engine run up and everything was absolutely perfect. So normally whenever we're doing maintenance like this, when we found an issue or an anomaly, we think through what's the cheapest and what's the most likely thing to fail. On the ignition system, it's the mags, the wiring or the spark plug. And the spark plug is the most likely thing to fail in the ignition system. And it's also the cheapest fix. Yeah, it's um, 1.15 PM and we haven't even left San Marcos. So we're gonna close the hangar for the second time. And uh, Let's try this again. Spark plugs fouled with lead are normally a result of the engine running too rich. Plus cylinder number four is where our primer injects fuel, so that all adds up. I guess this is all just a good reminder to me to be sure I'm leaning the mixture on taxi and fly high at lean of peak as much as I can, which will in turn also help prevent bad fouling and is overall just better for your engine if you can do it. This Lycoming 0320 is now purring on all four cylinders on both mags and it wasn't long before we leveled off at 7,500 feet, running lean of peak with the power flow while the GFC 500 autopilot takes us into Arkansas. Two, three, zero. <laughs> All that weather is out of the way now. It would have been even if we left on time. Right. We're descending in 10 minutes. You gonna start waking up? Are you gonna do the landing? I can't land this one, I'll land up all then. Okay. I'm really tired. But we need to start cleaning up and getting ready to sit upright and everything. Just give me five more. All right. And then I'll clean. The flight attendants will come through and prepare the cabin. <laughs> oh, there's everywhere from when you've been chowing. <laughs> don't laugh. It's true. Don't say something funny, then hey, maybe I won't laugh. Hey, don't snippy. You just wake up from your nap and start. <laughs> All right, we got about three minutes before we start down. You got any dental floss in this joint? Uh, not accessible. Under two minutes. Are you ready? Vertical track. All right, vertical track. It's ready to go in VNAV mode. I'm gonna roll the altitude bug down to pattern altitude or my target, 1200 feet, and hit VNAV. Memphis 809991, starting the VFR descent. We can go ahead and cancel flight following. Camera 809991, before you go, you have traffic 1221 o'clock and about 2 miles south on altitude in case 6500. Uh, Thunder, five. Traffic inside 809991. Camera 809991, Roger, radar service coming in, squawk VFR, proceed to change the Squawk VFR, go to advisory, thanks for the help, 9901. Alright, this is pretty good. I'm gonna take us off autopilot. Thousand to pattern altitude. 
Fordyce traffic, Skyhawk 80991 on the left downwind runway 23, full stop Fordyce. All right, pre-landing brakes, pedal test, taxi landing light on. Barrel minimums, we don't need it, autopilot is off. Seat belts, you're fastened. Yes. I am fastened. Mixture, let's go full rich. Carb heat, we'll keep it on. Fuel selector is on both and flaps are getting those here in just a second. Pre-landing checklist is complete. Fordyce traffic, Skyhawk 80991, turning final runway 23, full stop Fordyce. 500. All right, over the trees, 70 knots. 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, flap set 30, power to idle. What's Out of gas. Thing? Not notumed, it's not notumed. All right, I'll make this real quick. We stopped here in, at Fordyce Municipal, I think that's how you say it, five mic four in the middle of Arkansas to get gas, reasonable gas price, not a single notum belonging to this airport. Nothing saying fuel unavailable or anything. This is yet another reason why you should always plan to have at least an hour reserve. We have about an hour and 20 minutes of fuel remaining. That's plenty for us to hop to a different airport and just get some gas. This is gonna delay us a good bit further and we're definitely gonna be flying into the dark this evening, unfortunately, but we'll cross that bridge when we get to it, I guess. A little frustrated standing out here on the, on the ramp with the way gas prices are right now and, and unnecessarily skyrocketing. We're gonna hop to a nearby airport and hope that they don't have the same problem of not having any gas without a notum. Six eighty a gallon. I love when it gives me a receipt to remind me how much I just got reamed. <laughs> Do you still need to go to the bathroom? No. Okay, you already found your patch of grass at the air last <laughs> airport. I need to chug some water. I feel dehydrated and agitated. And I'm, tr I'm trying to, to control my temper. My shirt's all damp with sweat. We're still like four hours out. We're still four hours away and from our destination. And it's 5 p.m.? And no, it's like 6.30. We're in Central, so we still have an hour to lose. We're rolling into her parents at midnight, her parents' house. Sump the tanks, do all the, the pilot stuff and make sure that we're safe and good to go. And then we're gonna get in the air and just, 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 freak, just, but we're not gonna have get there itis. We're, we're playing it very safe. And like I said before, that's the very, well, it's not the very reason, but it's one of the very important reasons why we carry fuel reserves. We landed with about an hour and 20 minutes left. So according to the totalizer, we had six and a half remaining. According to the fuel pump here, provided this Arkansas Avgas pump is accurate, we had eight gallons remaining. So that means our fuel totalizer is still resting on the conservative side of measuring how much fuel we're burning. And is there a butterfly in the airplane? All right, it's going with us. Memphis approach Skyhawk 80991, 8100 climbing 9500. Skyhawk 80991, Memphis approach, Memphis altimeter 2989, and cleared through Memphis class Bravo airspace. 2989 are cleared through the Memphis class Bravo airspace, 80991. We're probably going to go a little bit left just to dodge this weather here. Skyhawk 9991, deviations left and right of course surface. Thanks. Blue 6169, maintain 170 knots for greater until Ronnie, contact tower 119. We're in T5 06 turn left wing 300 and join the runway 27 local weather. We're in T5 06, two miles from Covum, cross Covum oh at 3000, clear to ILS, runway 27 first. Covum 3000, clear to ILS, 27, 425. Kinja 881, Memphis, 4360, you got 73 in there, 4360 on the clock. We're in T5 06, maintain 170 knots or greater to Claiborne. Wow. Give me the 81 radar contact two miles south of the Millington Airport from the maintain 16,000. Gorgeous contrast. 4506, maintain 170 knots or greater to Claiborne. 170 or greater to Claiborne, 4506. That just made me tear up. Tower, woman that was so pretty. Is that a good shot? Oh my god. 809901 is back on course to Bowman. 809901, ready. Gamma Jet 881, contact Memphis Center 124.35. The afternoon thunderstorms over Memphis treated us with some truly amazing visuals as the sun grew closer to the horizon. Very soon thereafter, darkness was upon us, and it's a time to be extra vigilant in a single-engine airplane. 
The fact that the G3X has a four-point engine analyzer with visual and audible warnings does make me feel more confident that we'll catch any engine anomaly before it could become a real problem. The common ignorant excuse made in favor of flying a single-engine aircraft at night is, well, the engine doesn't know the difference between day and night, so you shouldn't be timid to fly at night if you're not timid to fly in the daytime. This one-sided reasoning is unfortunately far too common in GA and it entirely misses the point that you cannot see the ground to pick a safe landing spot. But I digress. Read some accident reports. We had close to an hour of smooth night cruise time and before we knew it, the lights of Louisville, Kentucky emerged off the nose. And Louisville Approach even took us right over SDF, which is the UPS World Headquarters. It was pretty cool to see that massive complex from directly above before sending us direct to Bowman Field. Cessna 991, thanks for your help. That is a heavy Airbus there, about 11 to 12 o'clock and 6 miles southbound, descending out of 7 for 6,000. Just caution like turbo. Contact uh, Louisville International Tower 124.2 for your transition over to Bowman. Have a good night. 24.2, we have the heavy in sight. We'll caution the wake. 991, good day. Louisville Tower, Skyhawk 80, 991, 4,400 descending. We have the heavy ahead of us in sight. Skyhawk 80, 991, Louisville Tower, Louisville altimeter is 299 or 2. EPS 1477 Heavy, no delay on runway uh, 11, where are you parking? Southbound, southbound Bravo, ramp 11 with you, EPS 1477. EPS 773, we're going around. EPS 773, Roger, climb and maintain 4000, turn left heading 270. 4000, left turn 270, EPS 773. They're going around. 991, traffic 2 miles south of you, 757 in the go around, climbing out of 2000. Got the traffic at sight, 991. EPS, uh, or correction, November 991, uh, no traffic reserve between you and Bowman for exchange proof. Over to Bowman, CTAF 80991, thanks for your help. EPS 1207 Heavy, Little Tower, good morning, wind is 2704, runway 35. Bowman traffic, Skyhawk 80991, Cessna 172, about 5 miles to the southwest of the field, descending out of 2500, we're going to set up for the left downwind 24, full stop, Bowman. Don't see anyone on final? Nope, don't see anyone, don't hear anyone. Bowman traffic, Skyhawk 80991, base to final, runway 24, full stop, Bowman. 500. flat. Welcome home. Uh, Alright, we'll go off at Alpha 2 before 3-3 three, three and 1-5. I closed the uh, car. My little plane. My little bird. All in all, it was a great day of cross-country flying for the both of us, and despite all of the challenges we faced just getting the day started, not to mention a bad fuel stop, we made it to our destination a little late, but safe and sound. My takeaways from these experiences are 1. Never skip a checklist. Do a run-up every time you shut the engine down and start it back up. Even if it's just a quick turn, you never know what you may find and it could very well save you and your passengers. And 2. Set personal minimums and stick to them. I've trained my brain and my ego to not be comfortable with planning a flight with less than one hour of reserve fuel. This is now the fourth time in the last three years that that habit has saved my butt in a situation like this. We had plenty of fuel to relocate to a nearby airport and still land well above the FAA required 30 minutes. In the next episode, Chelsea and I prepare to leave Kentucky bound for the greatest aviation celebration in the world. But that will also not come without some challenges to slap us down a bit. A couple of hints to that are the most insane traffic I have ever seen going into Air Venture, a 30 knot gusty crosswind and my seat coming undone in the flare. I've flown into Oshkosh five times now and this flight with Chelsea was easily one of the most insane I have ever seen the Fisk arrival. Oh, and not to mention this is her first time ever flying into Air Venture. That will all be in the next episode. Be sure to hit that like button if you did, subscribe if you haven't, and ring that notification bell so you don't miss out on the next episode of this series. I would definitely love to hear your feedback on this content down in the comments below, and until next time everyone, you know the drill. Stay happy, healthy, current, and most importantly, stay proficient. We'll see you right here in Kentucky in part two. Fly safe.